provide the staff presentation. Can you all hear me okay? Great. Once we get the presentation up, uh, I'll need uh, to adjust the lights. Excellent. Are you ready? <laughs> Good morning, Chair McGrath and members of the board. My name is Cleet Carlton and I took the oath. I'm an engineering geologist and case manager for the Marinewood Plaza LLC and Hoyt Enterprises case. I will present for your consideration an amendment to the final site cleanup requirements order R2-2020-0025, which I'll refer to as the 2020 order for the former Prosperity Cleaners site. Our main reason for proposing an amendment to the 2020 order is to add deadlines for implementing on-site soil excavation and submitting a completion report. The tentative order would also clarify specific reporting requirements. Next slide, please. The former Prosperity Cleaner site is in the Marinewood Plaza Shopping Center, which is located north of San Rafael in Marin County, just west of Highway 101 and south of Miller Creek Road. The former dry cleaner, shown in the black box, used tetrachloroethane, a dry cleaning solvent, also known as perchloroethylene, or PCE, which got into the subsurface, polluted soil, soil vapor, and groundwater. The affected groundwater plume extends to the east under Highway 101 to open fields as shown by the blue arrows in the figure. The PC remaining in the soil under and around the former dry cleaner building contributes to the PC detected in soil vapor shown by the green arrows. The 2020 order includes cleanup requirements for groundwater and for residual soil and soil vapor before discussing proposed amendments to the 2020 order, I would, uh, I'll provide an overview of the cleanup status. Next slide, please. For groundwater, the 2020 order required treatment of the groundwater plume, which was performed in 2021. The, the yellow areas in these images show the approximate extent of PCE in groundwater prior to and following the treatment. The treatment consisted of injecting iron, other chemicals, and microbes used specifically to degrade the contaminants along the transects shown in blue in the 2022 figure. While treatment appears to have significantly reduced plume concentrations, its effectiveness will continue to be monitored and will be evaluated in a report that is due by the end of June. Can I ask a question here? Sure. I assume that there's what you've got in the yellow on the top and in the white on the bottom, which shows up much more clearly in this, is that you're having no detects. So in that area, is, is there a robust number of samples? to the north that, that lead you to have a high confidence in those numbers? Uh, there have been long-term monitoring of uh, a select number of samples, but there also have been a number of grab samples taken at different times that aren't shown on this figure. So there's grab, grab samples as well as, as the regular monitoring and, and they're at non-detect, which indicates there might be some, but it's below the detection limits of the equipment. Right. Okay, great. Go ahead. I wasn't able to tell um, on your lower slide the extent to which the contamination 
now in 2022 reaches Miller Creek? Well, Miller Creek itself actually is monitored in a couple locations and uh, PC hasn't been detected in the creek itself. Okay. So neither in, if it's, um, when it's flowing, is it semi-perennial? Is it perennial? Um, is it dry at the moment? Is it? of where the plume is, is compelling looking at 21 to 22. But I'm having a hard time seeing from the data points that are shown here, how that plume is redrawn. I mean, is, is, is that plume uh, as it's drawn meant to show to a high degree of accuracy where you believe the plume actually is? Because it's you don't have a lot of samples and there's not a, I don't see the huge difference between the data points. Um, so I take it it's just an estimation on, and maybe there's a lot more data that I'm not seeing that's on here that, that leads you to that conclusion. What, is, that, is that the case? Well, or is this just pure, I mean, the, uh, I, I, how, how illustrative, how much stake should we put on the yellow highlighting as where the plume actually is? Well, I do say approximate and part of the reason is the, the extent shown in yellow, or is anything exceeding 10 micrograms per liter, which is two times the cleanup level, but pretty close to the cleanup level. So the wells, there's a lot of threshold changes in the wells before and after that went above and below that 10 microgram per liter threshold, which is why the, you see the dramatic reduction. And the maximum concentrations we're seeing in this plume are only a few uh, multipliers over that 10. So it's not like we're seeing orders of magnitude 
of uh, concentrations above that within this plume. <clears throat> so it doesn't take much reduction of the concentration to reduce the footprint because of that. But, and you have more technical expertise on this than I do by a long shot. So I'm just, so, but it's your professional judgment that uh, while an act, while an approximation, this is a fair approximation of how the plume has changed from one year to the next? I think it's reasonable. Okay. In uh, 2021, when they did, or in preparation for the injections, they also went in and did cone penetration tests with hydropunch grab samples along one or two transects. And that pro provided, in some areas, some higher resolution recent data as well. Um, okay. I, I'd like to add, uh, I'm Alec Noggle, uh, Fox 6 Cleanup Division Chief. Um, kind of circling back to uh, the prior question of, is this a typical expectation? The answer is yes. Um, and in fact, it's, it's even in some respects better than what we expect. We do these, we see these injections of these kind of reactive chemicals at many groundwater cleanup sites and often don't see an immediate response, especially that far down gradient as we're seeing here. Uh, so we think this is quite, you know, a, a positive development and indicator. And when is the next round of samples going to be taken? There's a, a, at least one more round of sampling occurring this year, but the uh, round of samples that uh, already occurred back in uh, April will be reflected into their uh, end of June effectiveness report. And is the, is the um, discharger uh, in, uh, up to date in terms of providing data to the board? Yes. Ever since, uh, um, ever since uh, this was referred to enforcement, they've been providing us the monitoring data. Okay, thank you. Well, go ahead and, uh, can we go ahead and finish? We, we're yeah. kind of excited by this, that picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got slide four up, great. For PCE and soil and soil vapor, cleanup actions were taken in 2016 and 2017 that significantly reduced PCE. These actions included soil excavation within the former dry cleaner building, shown in red, to remove sources of PCE and the installation of clay cutoff barriers across the utility trenches, shown in green, to reduce preferential pathways for soil vapor migration towards the residences to the west of the former dry cleaner. Since PCE and soil vapors around the excavation continue to be above cleanup levels, the executive officer approved a cleanup plan in 2019 for additional, additional excavation extends beyond the former dry cleaner building, it requires building demolition. The responsible parties have recently begun to implement the 2019 cleanup plan. Next slide, please. The 2020 order required Marinwood Plaza and Hoyt Enterprises to implement the approved cleanup plan to remediate residual PCE and soil and to address soil vapor that exceeds cleanup goals. But it did not specify a deadline. We required the responsible parties to provide a schedule for implementing the cleanup plan and in April of this year, they provided a schedule for performing the soil excavation. The tentative order would add a deadline to the 2020 order to complete the soil excavation in accordance with the responsible party's April 2022 schedule. Next slide, please. We publicly circulated the tentative order for 14 days and received two comments from members of the public. Both comments opposed adoption of the tentative order, saying deadline extensions would incentivize further delays and that the board should instead let penalties continue to accrue. Next slide, please. We respectfully disagree. The comments presume that the deadlines proposed to be added to the 2020 order would extend existing deadlines. They do not. The 2020 order does not include 
deadlines for these actions. Instead, the tentative order would establish additional enforceable deadlines. Moreover, the tentative order would do nothing to change our enforcement authority. It would preserve our ability to enforce the 2020 order along with the deadlines added by the tentative order. Enforcement of the 2020 order is not under consideration by the board today. If penalties for non-compliance were to be pursued, it would take place through a separate administrative civil liability process. Next slide, please. There we go. I would like to conclude my presentation by mentioning recent progress over the last couple of weeks to implement the cleanup plan. Pre-excavation soil sampling was conducted to help define the extent of soil that will need to be ex excavated and asbestos abatement was completed so the building could be demolished. And building demolished started yesterday as shown in this photograph provided to us by one of the commenters. We expect that adoption of the tentative order with the additional deadlines will ensure that cleanup is done. Thank you, Cle uh, Alexis, I believe you had a question or comment. With the new um, deadlines of the end of July, that's seven weeks from now. And I wondered if the soil excavation and the soil vapor actions that we've required are underway. Are we expecting them to be done by the end, by seven weeks from now? We are. Um, the, there are other scheduled deadlines in between starting with this mm -hmm. demolition that they're on schedule with. We keep on meeting those deadlines. They should be meeting excavation and reporting deadlines. And then a question for Yuri. Um, if the board were to amend the final order, what would be the consequence of the deadline or deadlines being missed? on July 30th. Are there penalties that, as implied by the comment letters, continue to accrue, or would the board have to take action um, to impose penalties, or would the board have to refer an action for enforcement? So um, the 2020 order did not have a um, deadline for the, the soil vapor work, so the amendment would, would add that deadline, and if it is missed, then the board, as with any violation, can or board staff can um, refer to enforcement. Um, it's already an enforcement. The enforcement staff can bring a um, complaint to impose administrative civil liabilities, and um, that would ultimately come before the board. But let me add a clarification. There are no penalties accruing. There's penalty liability accrues but there's, there's no stipulated penalties in place that continue to grow. Any penalty consideration would have to be a board, based on a board order, a subsequent board order. Is it a board policy to not put STIPs into administrative enforcement actions? Um, yes. Um, the water code doesn't um, necessarily allow stipulated penalties in cleanup orders. So what we do, is, um, we impose civil liability through a separate process. So let me ask, let me ask if you're done, Alexis. Um, uh, I just was poking through the, the file. There's an enormous number of things uh, in the file on Marinwood that have gone back, you know, we, the first order was issued in 2014. The first report of release was in 2008. Um, and one of the things I came on was came upon was a May 6th, 2020 executive officer's report uh, talking about Marinwood. And uh, I'm reading from a paragraph that's headed soils soil vapor cleanup delays. And I'll just read it. The order requires Marinwood Plaza 
complete additional soil evac uh, excavation to abate soil vapor contamination on the source property after demolition of the existing buildings. To date, the owner has not conducted the required remedial actions, nor have they submitted the completion report. On April 22, 2020, the Assistant Executive Office signed a notice of violation for the failure to submit a remedial action completion report for soil vapor demonstrating completion of the work by March 27, 2022 date. So we've been talking about this a long time. I know they've changed their plan so that they're now going back to excavation. Um, do we not have any ability to, at a minimum, have in place a penalty that immediately attaches for the failure, if there is a failure, to meet this deadline? I mean, I, the idea that we're going to start a new complaint proceeding if they don't meet this deadline. So, so Bill, I'm going to try to bring us back to the matter at hand, which is not enforcement. And, and at, I, I don't think any of the board is, is happy with the compliance record. The question here is, should we add this specific uh, stipulation? And, and uh, you know, in my own view, performance by a discharger is relevant but to, to look at their performance and whether it's been excellent or foot dragging, that doesn't determine what we might do on the violation side of it. Um, Yuri? It'd be, be, let, me, let me just ask okay. one question related to this stuff. Does the notice of violation that we've previously issued, is that somehow been suspended? Is that off the table? Is it no longer part of this? Well, it's part of a, the record for the compliance history. It's, 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 you know, it's a valid NOV. It's on the books. Um, it's the first step of informal enforcement. And it seems like it got the attention or uh, that and a bunch of other things, I guess, referral to the, the enforcement staff. Um, you know, it worked on some level to bring the um, discharger into compliance. Um, so it, it, it's valid. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask a different question then I'll pipe down. Um, I take it the discharger doesn't object to, to the order being amended in this fashion or is that contested? My understanding is um, that the order incorporates the schedule, the July 29th schedule that they themselves propose. So it's it's not contested. Okay. So we do have two commenters and I wanna make sure that this is clearly teed up before we go to them for comments. But, but if I understand this correctly, the, the order that was in place did not have a specific deadline for removal. Necessary partial soil removal was accomplished when within the footprint of the building. I remember those pictures, but the rest had not. And now there is a, enough data that indicates where the contaminated soil is, and there's a schedule to remove it. So this is that the the, the remainder, whether or not it's been done with the, the the groundwater. We've got evidence that indicates that it's been accomplished substantially, whether or not it's in time is another question. But, but I think the limited question before us today, which is not the enforcement question, although the credibility of the discharger still is relevant, is, is this necessary to make it very clear when the soil has to be removed? Because it, until the soil is removed, you still got vapor and you still got potential for groundwater. Yeah. And I, I believe that's the only issue before us. Is that correct, Steph? Yes, that's that's correct. And and any action we take here does not prejudice any action we might choose to take in in the compliance arena. Correct. Okay. I just want to make sure I, I don't make the board <laughs> to a person is gonna nominate this discharger for any kind of award. <laughs> the question <laughs> I'm not, um, but the question is, where are we? And I would like to go to the public comment. Yep. Um, and I, I know we have uh, Damon Connolly, and uh, and as an elected official, I'm going to recognize him first. Can you promote Damon Connolly? And uh, let's hear from him. Uh, 
And after that, Stephen Nestel. Do we have Damon? Yeah, Damon's in Zoom and I'm trying to promote him, but he needs to accept. So Damon, if you can hear this, please go ahead and accept. Damon's been promoted. Damon, go ahead. Supervisor Connolly. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to be here again with you. And thank you for responding to the community's request uh, that this matter come before the board with a staff report. I appreciate you putting the matter on the agenda. As you know, I've been working on this location for over eight years, and I'm anxious to see the cleanup done for our community. It's past time for this site to be cleaned up for the protection of human health and the environment. I'm encouraged that the plume into the ag lands across the freeway is being treated, and I'm discouraged that the soil vapor plume extending into Casa Marinwood continues to exist. Marinwood Plaza is a subject of great community interest in addition to the health concerns. The county is looking at Marinwood Plaza in its housing element, and the community would love to see some community serving businesses join the grocery store at that location. The cleanup needs to happen. We have been waiting for far too long. I appreciate the amended order that clarifies deadlines, including the July 29th, 2022 requirement to remediate uh, to and to establish deadlines and clarify requirements for on-site soil vapor remediation. Thank you for your ongoing attention to this matter. I would like nothing more than to see this removed from your docket at some point. So thank you again. We would like nothing more either. Thank you for your, thank you for comments and your attention to this. I think it's been helpful. Uh, Stephen, can you promote Stephen? Stephen's been promoted. Go ahead, Stephen. Even is speaking, maybe he's muted. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Um, uh, thank you very much uh, for having this before you today. Um, and I'd like to begin with a uh, thought experiment. Uh, imagine this morning you were sitting at your breakfast table and you uh, spilled your cup of coffee. What would be the first thing you do? Obviously, you'd pick up your cup of coffee, then you'd go get uh, a towel and you'd clean up. What you wouldn't do is you wouldn't rush to uh, clean up uh, the the end of the the spilt water uh, or spilt coffee. You the first thing you do is pick up the source. The problem with the approach being proposed is it's focusing on the plume and not the source contamination. And I did notice a couple things in the presentation. We're only looking at the contamination that was underneath the machines inside the building. Now that's apparently being addressed. But there's another source contamination known as the Eastern Hotspot where the discharger or, or the uh, Tri cleaner probably was emptying out uh, chemicals that has also gotten into the soil. The problem with this, it's on Caltrans land, and there, as far as I know, aside from a, uh, a few injections, there's been very little treatment or uh, barriers um, installed in that area. So if you don't get the source taken care of, 
everything else remains. Uh, the other thing is I, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a lawyer, I'm really way in over my head here, but um, looking at that plume map, I would ask when these sampling, when the sampling was done. Was it taken at high water, um, uh, ground level uh, uh, periods of the year or low groundwater? Uh, level periods of the year, we do know that there can be a significant uh, change in concentrations just with the uh, the water table level. I am so upset that the clean we called ourselves the Clean Up Marinwood Plaza Now Committee. We started in 2014, and then now it's 2022, and we're still calling ourselves the Clean Up. Uh, uh, Marinwood Plaza Now Committee, but it's not being done. The reason why I, I was so uh, object to the modification of the original 2014 order is that the discharger is not um, paying attention to any of the deadlines imposed. And I just don't see, and I, I'm guessing that the imposition of these these new orders or extensions is only going to weaken the legal position of the community against the discharger. Let's get this this site cleaned up. Let's not fool around with it. And I agree with Damon Connolly, who's been a beacon of light on this. This is not something we want to continue to come back and and ask you guys to. Uh, take care of. Let's just get it done. This, in my opinion, this is more about money and the uh, avoiding liability, expensive liability in the cleanup, especially on that um, second hot spot. We want to get this, this uh, uh, real estate back into community uh, use and uh, we have uh, affordable housing that uh, is interested in the site, not only there, but also across in the agricultural lands across uh, the highway. And so this this is a big deal. This is a big deal. And, we, you know, we're not doing anyone any favors by uh, allowing the discharger just a little bit more rope. And like Lucy with the football, uh, they're going to be pulling up the football, uh, you know, maybe in six months where something else comes up and they can't meet their deadlines. Take an aggressive stance and don't allow them any more opportunities. I, I think I I'm, remain unconvinced that the uh, that any any kind of alteration of the 2020 um, uh, order is going to benefit the community. They've, they've, they've not been cooperative to this point. So thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, we understand your skepticism. Um, the, the question, I think, back to the staff has to do with the adequacy of characterization of the new soil excavation area. I do remember, and there's ample uh, questions in the in the record about whether or not there were any other sites. So can you give us a, a conclusion on that, please? The one thing we didn't have in the presentation because it wasn't directly uh, addressed by the amendments, uh, the Eastern hotspot was referred to. That's a uh, small area. It's actually still on the Marimut Plaza property, uh, just to the west or excuse me, to the east of the dry cleaner. Uh, this area has undergone a couple rounds of remediation, firstly back in 2010, 2011, uh, through injections, just like in the groundwater, except the injections were both in the Vado zone above the groundwater and in the groundwater. And as a result, um, the groundwater numbers are at or below cleanup goals in that area. Soil vapor still remains elevated. However, from those first injections, that area, which was truly the hot area, those concentrations have gone down several orders of magnitude. So it's not as hot as the uh, dry cleaner on site. Nonetheless, additional ejections were also performed back in 2021 along with the groundwater 
uh, injections. And those injections, uh, we only have uh, one data point subsequent to those or one or two data points. They will be part of the evaluation at the end of this month. And if need be, more injections may be warranted. So if I could characterize your response, what's proposed before you and we see in, in this exhibit four uh, is, is a new excavation area and you have a high degree of confidence that that is the hottest of the hot spots and, and that the remediation that's occurred through groundwater injections may be sufficient for the hot spot, but that will be determined by the next round of sampling. Is that right? Uh, continue monitoring. Both sites will be. Continuing. There will be continuing monitoring, but in any case, your professional judgment is these are the highest priority soils for removal at this time, and they can and will be removed by the end of July. That is our expectation. Okay, so let's bring it back to the to the board. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that on my, is there another commenter? I didn't see another raised hand. Um, I, I just wanted to let the board know that the dischargers are also uh, on Zoom and available if there okay. is any So I have, I, I, I'm sorry, I have two new attendees, uh, Bill McNicholas uh, with, with hands raised and Christopher Alger. Bill, can you promote Bill and have him go ahead? Bill has been promoted. All right, Bill, go ahead. Promoted. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyhow, uh, you know me, Bill McNicholas, uh, chairman of the uh, Clean Up Marinewood Plaza Now Oversight Committee. Uh, uh, chairman uh, McGrath, uh, board members, executive officer and staff. I have a couple of comments on this, which as you know, I've been involved and Stephen's been involved, plus other members of the community since 2012. And we've been following the uh, program and with the dischargers failure to comply with anything, basically, on a regular per orders, starting with the wrap back on 414, 2014. And I don't have complete faith that they're going to make the deadlines since they haven't made any in the past for the last eight years. Why am I going to expect them to make deadlines now? But hopefully, with the new people in there, that they will make it happen. Knowing Mrs. Hoyt and the organization, I'm really questioning it. But yes, the hot spots go on a couple other things. The plume, which we talked about, has never been defined as was required with the uh, uh, wrap back in 2014. It's never been defined, and I know we brought it up many times to the board meetings. Uh, just following the history, which I stated, they haven't complied and they never met deadlines. One thing I'm seeing pop up, though, in the reports and the sampling is MTBE, which I have been told in the past by staff members that it probably came from leaking uh, because it showed up in the well over there. Equipment or the tractors or whatever, or possibly a gasoline truck uh, turned over on the freeway and it spilled over into the property. Uh, we have the Union 70, old Union 76 station that was taken down years ago because of MTBE and it was closed up. And there was a report which mysteriously disappeared from the records of GeoTracker, which we happen to have a copy of, that said not for residential building on this property. Uh, it is up there back up, or at least I haven't checked it recently. It, had, it was put back up on the thing. Just want to see if, in fact, and I hope that Cleet and Alex and Brian and people can make this happen to get this place cleaned up and then to follow up and make sure that, really, we want to get this place cleaned up and hopefully we can get Hoyt, Hoyt to sell it and uh, 
go back to a little community, which we had down there and put in some housing. So that's my comments. And I thank you for the time and uh, trying to keep uh, Cleet and staff, at least Cleet updated on what's going down at the plaza two, three times a week so that you guys don't have to come over here. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Christopher Alger. Christopher, can you promote Christopher? Christopher has been promoted. Go ahead. Thank you, Chairman McGrath. I'm, I'm Christopher Alger. I'm a, the principal engineering geologist with a consulting firm named Terraphase Engineering based in Oakland. I'm a, on a recent addition to the consulting team for Hoyt Enterprises. And I wanted to just speak to the questions of future performance that have been raised I'm a good example of the evolution and changes that are undergoing for Hoyt Enterprises for the Marinwood cleanup. My involvement was brought in specifically to help facilitate any of the delays and to address them to work with the primary consultant uh, who is doing an excellent job with the groundwater remediation and is uh, literally waiting uh, for the demolition to be completed to perform the soil excavations. Contractors have been retained. Uh, they are under contract. Permitting with the county is underway. And the sampling that was discussed earlier uh, by Mr. Carson Carlson um, is being used to define the extent of excavation and has stepped out beyond just the area defined. So we have a, a much greater database for vapor and soil conditions in the excavation area and have presented a work plan that will be followed that is to remove soils that exceed the cleanup standards. And so while there may be back history, it's before my involvement, I'm aware of it, but it's my role that I've accepted is to facilitate meeting these very tight deadlines that, uh, that uh, we're committed to and meeting and exceeding those deadlines. So uh, I'm professionally challenged by doing this and uh, plan on making sure that my client and the consulting team meets those deadlines. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alger. I'll bring it back to the board. For those of us who haven't had your and Bill's long history with this particular contaminated site, it would be terrific as we come back to this perhaps at the September meeting, since this proposed report would be due the week before we next, we would have our September hearing. It would be really helpful to have a master schedule. Um, as board member Young has observed, it's, it, it seems like there are always different kinds of tasks involved in this larger um, remediation. And for the board to stay abreast of, of these deadlines with the master schedule, maybe an update at, at the September meeting if you so desire, but being able to refer to things other than just, um, I feel like I'm, I'm taking bites of the apple and not seeing the whole piece of fruit. Let me make a comment and then I'll turn to Bill. Uh, it, it, delays are frustrating. And, and you know, I, I think in addition to that, you know, we have to look at our own activities and maybe we should have specified a, a, a date and a deadline on removal of soil, but we didn't. And, and I believe this action fixes that problem and, and it needs to be fixed. Um, I, I don't think it's completely fair to characterize the, 
the, the discharger has having done nothing. I think the performance of the groundwater uh, system is is certainly satisfactory and and probably better than I expected. Um, getting the soil out of out of the way and you know, having been brought in at the Port of Oakland to try a different approach, uh, I'm certainly willing to give Mr. Alger a chance. <laughs> and um, that doesn't that doesn't make up for problems of the past, but in, in my sense, I do have a sense of urgency about of getting the soil out of there. And, and I think uh, my questions were gonna be, is there somebody under contract and do you have the permits? And Mr. Alger answered those questions. They have the permits, they have somebody under construct, they have uh, the soil people under construction and they're, and they're taking the building down. So uh, that's enough evidence for me. Bill? Thanks, Jim. Um, look, there's no question that we should fix the order and include the deadlines. I, I think the reason I raised the 2020 um, executive officer report is because there have been deadlines that have been missed. And I think Alexis's point is exactly right. We keep looking at this without looking at the big picture. And I think the community members that point out the length of time, the deadlines that have been missed is a key point. I'm all for holding them to this deadline. Uh, and that's the reason for asking about questions because my view will be the strongest possible reaction, even if it seems unreasonable now <laughs> against the history, it's not unreasonable to absolutely demand meeting the deadline that they think that they can meet. So that's, that's where I come from on this. It's uh, long overdue. Um, I think the board has been <laughs> unbelievably generous with this discharger. We've given them an enormous amount of time to get this work done. Let's get it done. And I 100% agree with the community members. Let's get it done. I, but obviously I do think amending the order to include this deadline is absolutely the right thing to do here. So Bill, I would appreciate it if you would um, move the staff recommendation with an understanding that we do expect to report on this because we're tired of waiting. Not, not that we uh, don't mind the visits from uh, Bill and Stephen, who <laughs> we've come to know very well. So I uh, would like to make that motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. <laughs> I'll <laughs> have it on the table. Uh, Chair McGrath, just one question. Yes, go ahead. Over here. I know I never say much. <laughs> um, I did hear the, uh, the gentleman mention that the work plan was available, that he's working on it. Is it possible that the staff has a copy that we could just at least have an opportunity to review, if not a master schedule? We only received that this week. We're uh, still going to be talking about that internally tomorrow. We, we received in April a progress report that outlined the schedule of things that we are, that's the basis of the dates in this amendment. Um, but a master schedule is right. Yeah, I was referring to what uh, uh, Chris Alger mentioned about a specific work plan for the excavation. Having removed contaminated soil, you need a qualified contractor, you need a health and safety plan, you need permits, you need a place to put the soil. That's not rocket science. I mean, I think that's done pretty much every day. I imagine you might be might even have done some of it. Yeah, and I, I was just sort of buttressing <laughs> Bill's comment, which is one date that we're trying to meet without anything listed before. It could be procrastination time again. At least with a work plan or a master schedule, we know that there are steps that are being taken to get to that date. That's what I was getting at. So, okay, I'm good. We're ready to call the roll. Go ahead and call the roll. Yes. Board Member Gunther. Yes. Board Member Hacker. Yes. Board Member Kissinger. Aye. And Chair McGrath. Aye. So ordered. Boy, does I, do I hope they meet that deadline. <laughs> Boy, do I hope that. You know. <laughs> um, we have no further business, do we? No. Um, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.